the sun was shining everywhere. We are so lucky to have this uh, interesting three-quarter bass in our shop here, available for your perusal, I would say. And um, this is bass ha has a little bit of history. This bass belonged to Richard Simon, quite a well-known bassist, and was used among many other places, in the performance of an Ernie Andrews album, How About Me? So that would be an interesting place to possibly uh, learn more about how this bass can perform and sound in a uh, recording situation. But um, I would like to give you the quick tour as usual, and then I'll play some jazz notes and see what we got. Um, Scroll with German tuning machines. This is clearly a German-made bass, unlabeled. Um, the way these, as I almost always say, the way these keys are um, attached, these are separate keys attached to an iron shaft, and this is, this is a 20th century. Now here's a, an interesting detail, which um, I hope the camera can effectively scope in on. There is a scarf joint here in the neck. The, I would say that the character of the grain looks very similar and what I gather from looking at this carefully is that this was a bass that was made with a longer string length and an E-flat neck and uh, some, someone along the way decided if we could just shorten the neck a couple or three centimeters we, you know, you can accomplish in a case like this uh, two good things at the same time. You can shorten the string length down to be a very comfortable 42 inches or less and at the same time accomplish the D neck. So um, I think that's what's happened to this bass. I don't see evidence of a break here or here and you know if work was done in this area and the, and the, and the um, heel was out of this body Somebody did one heck of a good job putting it back in. I would honestly say has never come out. Um, as just as we continue down uh, looking at the body, you see some nice flame here on this uh, upper bout, although I would comment that overall this is not an, uh, a highly flamed uh, base. The maple is not selected uh, for high flame like that. Um, looking at the top, I hope that the, picture, that the camera picks up the, the grain here on the top. It is so evenly spaced from the edge all the way into the center. It's really just perfect. I would also comment that this top is one that's had little repair. Some, there's a, there's a small crack here, and there also is a crack, uh, let me find it, in this area, nicely repaired and cleated, and once again, let me just point out the obvious, this is not near the base bar. So a weather related crack, something like that, that's been repaired. Um, and then just turning around to look at the back of the base. Um, you, as I commented earlier, it's not a highly flamed uh, piece of wood, um, but it sure does tell a story. What do you think all of these marks come from? I mean, really. I love old instruments like this, I'm wondering where they've been and uh, the music they've made, the people they've seen and met. Um, so you'll get a chance to hear Chris play some Arco music on this bass. Um, however, the instrument really through its life so far, or at least in the past 20 years, has been mainly a jazz bass. So it does have this uh, full circle pickup on it, and um, you get a chance to hear some jazz playing on it as well. Sings nicely up here. So,
next I'll be playing some spiccato on all four strings. <laughs> Finally, I will play one orchestral excerpt and one lyrical solo piece. Mm -hmm. 